Um, fourth episode when came another model. Argon. That's helium. Oxygen. Argon. Argon is no more than oxygen um, with eight tripods added. They can land and stick to it, creating argon. You can see oxygen in the middle, the yellow one, the yellow structure. Of course, the next shield, the third shield, is painted blue, so you can distinguish them, and you can check whether this third shield really shields off the one before. Argon has tripods, and if you look at this model, you can see every tripod one of those legs is flagged down. Well, it should be because, as I've shown before with those clockwise and clockwise story, um, it can only have two protons. One triangle can only have two protons. And indeed, all these things, all these eight triangles, have two protons and one neutron, which is flagged down. Um, there's more to it, of course. Um, you can see that it's not only the uh, new tripods we have to take into account, but also their interaction with the existing yellow members. And um, again, this is the most efficient way to, to, to spin as many uh, nucleons as possible and to turn as many of those into protons as possible. And therefore, um, it are those legs over here which are flagged down and not one of these. You can uh, look at it from all sides and you can, uh, you can distinguish, you can see the tripods uh, made out of yellow and blue because those are there as well and those have to comply to that simple rule set so again this is the only way as many protons as possible can spin now again we're going to look at the valence of argon of the number of spinning protons and we will notice that it has again two separated systems on top or at the bottom and each has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight protons. Eight protons and eight protons makes 16 protons. However, argon has 18. So what are the other two? Well, you see those ones, you remember those sticking out. They still have some valence. But uh, the thing is, because they are adjacent, to these. Over here they're not sticking out very much, but here they are. And they are adjacent to four flagged down nucleons. Now with oxygen we saw if the adjacent nucleons are neutrons or uh, pro excuse me, the protons right here. Here they are protons. Then they shield off this from valence, from the shielded off, so this cannot make a chemical bo uh, bond. But over here, there are no protons. The adjacent ones are neutrons. The protons are in the middle, and the adjacent ones, adjacent to this one, are the neutrons. So they are not capable of shielding this properly, which leaves us with 2 times 8 is 16, 17, 18 electrons, 18 electrons ready to bind in argon. So it took some time to figure it out, but in the end I got it right. Eight protons, uh, eight valence, and 18 valence. Remember those figures, they're very important. Um, if you're going to build these things, I want you to uh, do it for yourself, not just follow me, but with every step, imagine 
is he right? Does this, uh, can I, I want you to come up with those numbers, with those valences, with those numbers of protons by yourself. I don't want you to repeat them for me. This, the numbers are 2, 8, 18, 32, 50, 72, and 98. I want you to get to those figures by yourself using this, this simple rule set. I've shown you. Now, next one is germanium. And germanium is made out of, of course, argon. That's what we started off with. And then we added four parts. And four parts can spin all together. But as you can see, they are stretched in a certain way, stretched out, creating actually three parts. Look at the red. Legs, actually, it's a four part, but there are four legs on this. You can count four legs, but two are flagged down because they are stretched in such a manner. Uh, it looks like two, three parts uh, next to each other. So that's why you flag those things down. And all over, there are four parts. And they have the similar, the same rule set. Um, Now, the th uh, thing with uh, germanium is the same as with oxygen. Um, this one is sticking out, so is the one on the other side. But they do not have any valence because they are adjacent to a number of protons which shield off this particle, which shield off this member. So that's why this has a valence of 32. Uh, don't believe my word for it. Just look at it. I can show you this. On top it has one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, twelve on this side, twelve spinning electrons on the other side, and eight in the middle, in the center. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you got two times twelve and eight makes thirty-two spinning electrons. 32 valence. Again, the number of uh, chemical bonds has to do with the number of gear systems, uh, number of independent gear systems. Um, that's germanium. Let's do another one, and this is a, uh, how do you call it, tin. Now, the fun part of tin is, um, well, we did the same thing as with germanium. We create a new layer, this time yellow, it's called yellow, and we have used tripods, again tripods, six times four, 24, uh, oh, 24 four parts, not tripod, but four parts. You can see if I, this one is a four pot, there's one, two, three, four legs, 24 four parts added. And after doing so, you get uh, left with holes, sharp holes. Allow me to get uh, another atom. This is thin, as I told you. This is ruthenium, and they are very much alike. Uh, in fact, ruthenium is this germanium when, after adding 24 four parts, you end up with ruthenium, number of valence, number of electrons, even the atomic weight, it all complies. It all complies with modern day science. Um, looking at ruthenium, after adding those four parts, you can count them, of course, um, we see these gaps right here is a big we have a gap right there and the opposite side as well in fact ruthenium has six of those gaps and ruthenium is a very strong metal very hard surface can be made using ruthenium but now this uh these holes can be covered with single nucleons, just like this, single nucleons. 
um, these are more abundant. You can say, well, maybe a four pot can land on it. Yes, a four pot can land on it, but more likely, because these are far more abundant, a single nucleon lands on it, going from one side to the other, crossing, as we see here, from one four pot to an opposite four pot. And this can happen six times. And with each step, we see ruthenium going from a, a nice, uh, even structure, a nice, shiny and strong surface. It gets more buttery with each step. There are six steps, actually seven if you include, it, include the ruthenium itself. Uh, steps from ruthenium via silver to tin. So every step... Uh, the metal becomes softer and less shiny. And it makes perfect sense because every time we add one of those nucleons, it gets rounded off, becomes more malleable. So that's why silver and tin are way softer than ruthenium. And of course, adding these things, one can be there, the other can be on that side, on that side, on that side. It becomes a bit of a mess. And therefore, not a fine, a nice uh, crystal structure, not very strong, but especially not very shiny because it gets uh, disturbed. You get, if you have exactly uh, three-dimensional, uh, you call it symmetrical objects, three-dimensional symmetrical objects, you can get a very nice smooth crystal. But the moment you get uh, this discrepancies, how you call them, the little imperfections all over, it becomes more uh, matte. The mat uh, your element gets a matte finish, like silver. Silver isn't very shiny, and uh, tin uh, is even worse. So that's uh, the difference between uh, ruthenium and tin. So you have two steps here. First steps, you go from germanium, add the four parts. You have ruthenium, and after flagging the ruthenium down, you're going to add six single uh, nucleons in those caves, in those crevices, creating tin. And tin is the completed fifth shield having 50 valence. So that's it for now. Till next time.